Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. In the news this week, a visit by Prince William and his army mates to the bingo made news around the world. Although Al Jazeera almost caused a riot with their headline, British soldiers seen entering Mecca. <laughs> Speaking of posh boys, at the Tory party conference, David Cameron responded to allegations that he hadn't written his own replies on his website by going on the internet and filming himself bashing one out. <laughs> it's been a busy week for Norman Tebbett in Bournemouth. When he's not speaking at the Tory conference, he's hanging from the ceiling in the ghost train. <laughs> one issue on the Tory conference agenda is prison overcrowding. One solution is that the prisons should share beds, as suggested by Delegate Fisty Wilkinson. <laughs> Police in London have been told they can't use the word yobs to describe loutish behaviour. This obsession with supposedly offensive terms has gone down very badly with some members of the filth. <laughs> the shortage of flu vaccines means that thousands of old people are at risk. And I don't know really if we should be inoculating people against flu. Flu is very much nature's way of freeing up seafront property in Eastbourne. <laughs> Tonight are six of the country's top comedy performers. Andy Parsons, John Colshaw, Ian Stone, and Frankie Ball, Hugh Dennis, and Mark Watson. Welcome to you all. <laughs> Our first round is called Headliners. I showed the teams a recent photo along with the initial letters of a newspaper headline. You know the rules by now. Here's a picture from this week's Conservative Party conference in Bournemouth. And what does TCSP stand for? Is he taxi chorus stupid people? <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it uh, try creating some policies? <laughs> um, <laughs> is it a bit of a long shot? Is it Tom Cruise suckles pig? <laughs> <laughs> you can't see what they're looking at. There must be something interesting. <laughs> raise a hand to that I uh, <laughs> in the hotel. He'd lift his hand up from the nipple of the pig yeah, and exactly. high-five me. Uh, <laughs> the, yeah. I think it's pretty much definitely that. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. things that you'd celebrate. Is it Thatcher's coffin scene passing? <laughs> 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 is, it, um, is it Tony Blair, Cameron, same person? <laughs> Try cycling, says Ponce. <laughs> The C stands for cuts. 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 Tax cuts. Tax cuts. Suspect package. Is that it? No. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> Two news stories slammed together. <laughs> tax cuts. <laughs> Suspect package. Uh, I was writing about tax cuts, but then I saw this bag. I don't know who owns it. Uh, <laughs> this is more important than any tax cuts. I'm going to write about this story. Yeah. <laughs> is it tax cuts split party? That's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> The answer I was looking for was tax cut split party. It refers to the row at this week's Conservative Party conference after David Cameron and his shadow Chancellor George Osborne refused to give in to demands from party members for tax cuts. Did you enjoy the Tory conference? I, I loved it. I loved the way he described himself as a liberal conservative. What the hell is a liberal conservative? <laughs> Somebody who doesn't approve of gays but just likes watching a lot of them on video. <laughs> It's hard for Cameron, because if he promises tax cuts, they might get elected, he might have to do it. Whereas Duncan Smith and Hay, they could say what the hell they liked, because they weren't going to win. Hay could just say, we'll make everyone able to fly. They <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't have to get elected. <laughs> Except the foreigners, <laughs> they will not fly. They shall be... <laughs> the foreigners shall be rooted by lead boots, they shall watch us fly. <laughs> 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 just, it's just so sort of unbearably sort of patronising and out of that touch. Isn't it? Yes. Well, who hasn't dropped some cocaine tablets and listened to the Arctic Kaiser Chiefs? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's that thing, you know, where everything is a photo opportunity for him. Mm. Yeah. And none of it's actually that impressive. So it's not that impressive to ride huskies or cycle a bike. Seeing as it's just a photo opportunity anyway, I'd like to see Cameron kick a lion's head off. <laughs> I would vote for that. If, if he came on in his party political broadcast and kicked the lion's head off and then turned to the camera and went, could Tony Blair kick a lion's head off?
He was on curious form, though, wasn't he? Because he said, let sunshine win the day. N yeah. And I don't remember anybody arguing that sunshine <laughs> shouldn't win the day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I remember. See. Vote Labour, vote Rain. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Our that... priorities are precipitation, precipitation, <laughs> precipitation. <laughs> the uh, actual was let the sunshine win the day, which is because the original version was let the sunshine out of my arse. <laughs> <laughs> Entertaining the way Cameron does keep falling into this trap of trying to use naff young phrases oh. like some sort of geography teacher trying to be cool, like, you know, hang loose everyone and yeah, and, you know, keep it real, yeah. <laughs> He's essentially what got Blair elected the first time around. Is yeah. the candidate who most uh, behaves like Donny Osmond <laughs> is the one that the British electors most trust. Because mm. it's fair, after we've had the two party conferences, you, you've got a straight choice ba basically between a door Scottish accountant or the lead singer from Joseph and the Technical Adrenal Coach. <laughs> <laughs> That's essentially what he was doing. Like, and so he said, "Give me some policy." He'd go, "A crash of drums, a flash of light, <laughs> and a golden coat." That Cameron was sort of more attractive when we knew less about him. Now that you're actually getting to see him, you're, you're going, "Isn't mm. his face kind of made out of dough?" <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he sort of unbelievably posh? He looks like he was raised by a robot butler called Sir Henry. <laughs> He's done the terrible, terrible Web Cameron, which is... Oh! oh. <laughs> I, I see him doing a... It's, it's meant to be a Web Cam in his house, but it isn't, actually. Yeah. It's just a video. It's meant to be very modern, but in being a video, it's essentially just an idea he has borrowed from Osama bin Laden. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's, Do you want to see a little bit of Web Cameron? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. oh, this Absolutely. is an education. Oh. This is what young people want to see. This is Web Cameron. Um, Right, welcome to Web Camera. Um, watch out, BBC. Oh, I'll do it in a minute. Well, watch out, BBC and ITV. You know, we're coming after you. This is, I think, a really good way of communicating directly with people about what the Conservative Party is doing, what we believe in. What do you want to do? Wash your hands. In a minute. <laughs> If you, if you were on the net and you, and you saw that, wouldn't you, just to cleanse yourself, wouldn't you click immediately to porn? <laughs> There's finally something on the internet that's impossible to masturbate to. <laughs> I'm sorry, how much are they going to go with this thing of, uh, oh, you just happened to have dropped in, oh, I'll better tell you about Tory policy. What do you mean, oh, you've just caught me getting out of the shower. <laughs> it's almost, it's, let, me, let, me, let me just try myself off and talk to you about our plans <laughs> Realistic, this is right. In the first one, he's washing dishes in the sink. In the second weblog, he's loading his bloody dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> it's not yeah, a typical day in the life. If you listen very, very closely, what the child is saying uh, in child speak is, "Where is Maria, our Filipino maid, who normally does this job?" <laughs> catch people in unguarded moments, isn't it? That's the point of this yeah. web camera. But obviously, the Labour Party don't need that because Cherie Blair does that at the party conference. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know, the, in terms of this, is we have a picture of the front row of the Tory oh, yeah. conference. Yeah. I mean, this is oh. this is like Weblog Central. Look at these people. Here. This is the actual <laughs> people. <who are> <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, 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 that's like Charlie's yeah. Angels in the year yeah. 2056. <laughs> that's what I mean. it looks, doesn't it? It looks like the army of the undead, and you kind of go. <laughs> You know, if you slay us, there are hundreds more to take our place. It's like an audition for Hello, Hello. <laughs> Did someone just plant dragon's teeth and they sprang up? <laughs> I tend to think, though, if, if, if you're making a speech to people of that age, you could probably do the same speech at least four times. Because <laughs> you figure at least two of them are going to be dead the next year. <laughs> one of them's going to forget, and the other one's probably not going to hear it in the first place. <laughs> They well, must have been quite confused. It must have been, when's Daniel O'Donnell going to sing? <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a lovely kind of... <laughs> when he said, uh, when he said uh, of course, I think the NHS is one of the greatest achievements of the last century, <coughs> which is, like, uh, clearly uh, <coughs> Labour's great finest ever moment. And they cut to lots of old people going, have, have, I, have I come to the wrong one? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, it's like more people must piss themselves at a Tory party conference than at a Beatles gig. <laughs> Imagine the whole floor is just those yellow cubes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, uh, yet at the Tory conference in Bournemouth, David Cameron's ovation went on for ten minutes, by the end of which most of the audience had managed to get to their feet. <laughs> Cameron, of course, lives in Notting Hill, which staged another carnival this year. In fact, there were so many bandwagons, he couldn't decide which one to jump on. 
<laughs> At the end of that round, the points go to Ian, John and Andy. <laughs> the next round is called Between the Lines and features Hugh and Frankie. Would you both please make your way over to our press pit? In this round, one of them takes on the role of a person in the news addressed in the media, while the other translates what they really mean. As he prepares to assume centre stage, Frankie, you are Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Thank you, got it right in one. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> and you, you will tell us what he really means. I am Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. <laughs> But you can call me Ted. <laughs> <laughs> we are developing nuclear power, but our aim is peaceful. We are developing nuclear power, but our aim is Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> We're developing nuclear power which could benefit the West. Have you considered changing your electricity supply? <laughs> Iran has been accused of sponsoring terrorism. We do. <laughs> 50 p a mile. <laughs> the American president is the son of a swine. I hope that one day his body is identified by the teeth marks on my penis. <laughs> I don't like George Bush. <laughs> we are a modern people. At night, I relax by listening to the stones. <laughs> Thudding into the bodies of innocent women. <laughs> I am opposed to nuclear weapons and would like to see reducing numbers. Five. Four. <laughs> Two, one. Very good. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. And you. <laughs> now we play a round called News Wheel of Death. <laughs> <laughs> this game involves Mark, Andy, <coughs> Frankie, and Ian. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is a stand up challenge with a random news generator spinning around and all the topics, you know, to this day. We spin the wheel, and when it stops, anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh about the subject it's landed on. OK, here we go. Let's have a topic. And the first topic is telecoms. Now, I've got a crap mobile phone, right? It's, and I'm sick of my phone company ringing me up, trying to get me to have an upgrade. Do you want a free upgrade? Do you want a better phone? No, I like my crap phone. Uh, one day, I'll be walking my dog and I'll take it away and say, have a wolf instead. <laughs> it drives me mad. And this guy was determined to make me have this... the Samsung Golden Cock 4000 or something. <laughs> So, oh, yeah, you get this phone, you see. You can download TV clips onto it. Are you interested in watching TV on your phone? It's like, well, no. <laughs> I've got a TV, right? <laughs> I'm not interested in watching TV on my phone. Same reason I'm not interested in having a piss in my tumble dryer. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's have another topic. The subject is bird flu. Who wants to come in that? Ian. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know if anyone uh, here is scared of uh, bird flu. Is anyone a bit concerned about? No one? No, no. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be the first to go. We do have a bird flu helpline. We do give us advice on what to do in the unlikely event that we encounter a dead bird. And I thought, well, yeah, well what are people doing at the moment? <laughs> oh, look, there's a dead bird. I must rub it in my face. <laughs> Hello, bird flu helpline. <laughs> I think I made a grave error. <laughs> I was walking down the street and I encountered a dead bird. I rubbed it in my face, yeah. <laughs> Is that wrong? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> if only I'd have spoken to you earlier. <laughs> what, now? The kids are playing with it, yeah. <laughs> well done, Ian. Very good in stone. <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Andy and Frankie. Let's have another topic. Topic is Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> I have this covered. <laughs> is that your image of Scotland? <laughs> you know that that's three English blokes at a wedding. <laughs> Do you remember years ago when they were making Braveheart, 
everyone said, oh, it's ridiculous, Mel Gibson playing a Scottish guy. That's not going to be very convincing. And look at him now, an alcoholic racist. <laughs> The most Scottish thing I've ever seen. I was going through a town called Bathgate at about half past 11 at night, and there was a guy pissing <laughs> against the front door. <laughs> he then took out his keys and went inside. <laughs> Thank you, Roy, and <laughs> OK, let's see what's left for Andy. That's education. I am a little disappointed. <laughs> I was hoping to get England as a topic. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, education. You may have seen that, in fact, our kids are now going to get taught atheism in the classroom. You would have thought that should be a fairly short lesson, wouldn't you? <laughs> Hello, come in. There is no God. <laughs> Same time next week. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, points for everyone there. Too good from all of you. Come on back. Come on back. Our next round is called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories. For each chosen category, I read out an answer and the players have to guess what the question might be. Ian, which category would you like? Um, I'll take crime. Crime, OK. The answer is every 12 seconds. What is the question? Uh, how often in London does someone try and offer you a free newspaper? <laughs> <laughs> how often does John Prescott think of chips? <laughs> <laughs> how often does George Michael wake up? <laughs> Is it how many times over a 24 hour period do you hear, Hello, I'm Barry Scott, and are you still it bang? <laughs> if Ron Seal ran the transport system, how often would the train every 12 seconds service <laughs> actually run? <laughs> is, it, is it how often are police in Glasgow called out to deal with a pregnant woman attacking a Rottweiler with a sledgehammer? <laughs> <laughs> is it, uh, how often does someone finish a Sudoku and then think, what was the point of that? <laughs> It's, it is to do with a uh, certain theft. It's this story about mobile phones this week. How often are mobile phones? That's like, uh, yeah. entirely right. Well done. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the question I was looking for is, according to new figures, how often is a mobile phone stolen in this country? This is a recently published phone industry study that shows a handset is stolen every 12 seconds in Britain and a third of robberies uh, nationwide involve phone theft. Uh, what system has been developed to combat mobile phone theft? It's a it, screaming phone, isn't it? Yes, mm. it, is. it just screams, which is brilliant. There's a screaming phone at last will replicate the feelings of everyone else in the carriage. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing, though, is if this scream goes off and they've got it in their pocket, isn't it? It'll seem that they've kidnapped a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> and what if it's on silent? <clears throat> <laughs> It'll just mutter to itself. <laughs> In silence, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> if, if they program the phone that when uh, it gets stolen, you can, you know, press a button and, and the phone will go, I'm a stolen phone! I'm a stolen phone! <laughs> it's stolen by a big gay thief. <laughs> <laughs> The irony of it is that a lot of these phones are stolen from children, and the children are given phones uh, in case they ever get mugged. So they... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big fan of all this, this new technology, though, because, you know, you used to be able to call wrong numbers, didn't you, and it didn't matter. Now you call the wrong number on your mobile phone, half an hour later you get a call back. I believe you just called me. <laughs> <laughs> I got a wrong number. No, no, Sonny Jim, what was it you wanted to say? <laughs> well, I like at that point, I like to go... <sighs> <laughs> Bloody brilliant. Mm. I get to make a dirty phone call, but they've had to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never known how you make a, a heavy breathing phone number. I didn't think it's like going... <sighs> Is that more like you're cleaning a mirror, really? <laughs> <laughs> What's amazing about mobile phones, though, is the fact that you know, they're actually not very good for you. You know, there are loads of medical studies, but no amount of medical research will stop people using mobile phones. It will stop them living near pylons, it will stop them using microwaves, but mobile phones, no one gives it to you. It's like, hello, yeah, I'm in a CAT scanner. 
<laughs> so, do people think crime is out of control? Well, have you seen the thing what? this week? They've uh, worked out why electronic tagging doesn't yeah. work because people are taking them off. <laughs> Was the point was that they monitored where the people... Oh, we wondered why he hadn't moved at all for four months. <laughs> we thought he was living at the bottom of a canal. <laughs> and do you, do you know the other thing they're doing in Scotland? They're taking the tags off and attaching them to dogs. <laughs> oh, that's we, genius. We thought you were just living in some bins, but no. <laughs> attached it to a dog. Criminals are so sneaky, aren't they? They are. That's they are. It's almost as if they don't want to be caught. <laughs> Just going round and round and round and round, chasing himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it is the lowest crime rate uh, since uh, records began in 1981. Did, Across the board, records, crimes are down. Oh, records people, only began in 1981. Well, they do, they do yeah. what they have. The ones have been stolen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> we just live in a country with a general climate of fear, don't we? I mean, like, the Daily Mail is, what, 12 months away from running a headline Asylum seekers carry a new type of AIDS that lowers house prices. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the headline, by the way, in the Daily Mail after the bombings? It said, uh, Bombers on benefits. <laughs> bombers, yeah, it's those scrounging bombers that piss me off. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind the bombers that pay their own way, but these scrounging <laughs> bombers get right up my mind. They're talking about um, freezing the assets of terrorists as well, freezing their bank accounts. Is that you? You come in bombing? Oh, I'm skint. <laughs> So the July the 7th bombs could have been stopped if they'd gone to an ATM just to get a bike <laughs> train ticket to go. I'd love to oh, join in. I've got nothing, sorry, I'd love to go. Yeah. But I can't I've really been to the cinema this week, can't do everything, can yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> The prison population is now at its highest ever, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's nearly run out of space. It's 71,000, isn't it? It's, 300... well, it's, it's, it's more like 78,000, uh, and they can take just below 79,000. There are exactly 326 places left in prison. Oh, in so, well, that's not fair to people who want to go to prison. They're yeah. going to have to join some kind of waiting list. Yeah, it's like <laughs> schools. <laughs> it, it is like school. You, have, you put... actually have to move into the area yeah, where the prison yeah, is. Put them down. <laughs> Do you get Church of England prisons, which are slightly better run? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to exactly, allow 25% yeah. of, uh, of non-Church of England prisoners <laughs> into their fair. prisons now. Yeah. You know, the amazing thing is that, you know, they've still got slopping out, you know, so people share a cell and they've both got to go to the toilet in a bucket, and yet these guys can still find each other sexually attractive. <laughs> <laughs> well done, prisoners, for keeping the magic alive. <laughs> As one would approach the other, he'd go, you have no mystery to me anymore. <laughs> no, it's just light a jaw stick, Barry, let's go at it. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to know an awful lot about this. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't go to prison, but I was at Catholic school. <laughs> <laughs> what has been banned by police authorities? Uh, uh, crime, crime. <laughs> Not yeah. crime. It's the word yob, isn't it? It oh, is yeah. the word yob. You're not allowed yeah. to say yob in case it's offensive to yobs. <laughs> well, I think it's, it's, it's because, presumably it's because on the police report it kind of prejudges. On the innocent to proven guilty, is it, we, we found the yob uh, outside the supermarket. <laughs> it kind of goes, oh, all right. Uh, you know, as opposed to they go, we found the ne'er-do-well. Yeah. Uh, uh, well. ne'er if, if, if they're obliged to call all people bandito, that'd be good as well. Uh, <laughs> It was a gang of banditos uh, spray, spray painting a McDonald's. Uh, in the, in the that chair. sounds a bit gay for my liking. <laughs> it's weird. What image in your head when I said a gang of banditos? Are they all wearing leather chaps? Yeah. Yeah. Bum banditos. <laughs> well, they're bum banditos. They're an entirely different section. Are they, are they called Barry and have they got a joystick? <laughs> Barry the bum bandito. Uh, it's like a hideous children's book. Uh, <laughs> what are you in for, Barry? Playing the castanets during a sexual assault. <laughs> Typical of you, Barry. You never lost your style. Uh, <laughs> OK, the winners that round were Frankie, Hugh and Mark. <laughs> now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see and the performers come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. The first subject tonight is commercials that never made it to air. <coughs> Links for that cheap teenage smell of desperation. <laughs> <laughs> because some nights are best forgotten. Rehypnol. <laughs> In 
injured at work, don't drive a jet car at 300 miles an hour. <laughs> The Islamic Jihad High School, because they blow up so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tony the Tiger. Siegfried and Roy taste great! <laughs> For effective ethnic cleansing, use Milosevic. <laughs> the post office. We're always full of absolute freaks. <laughs> We laundered this half of the money with the Mafia and this half with the more violent Chinese triads. <laughs> L'Oreal! <laughs> <laughs> By the year 2020, we shall rule the Earth. Tesco, every little helps. <laughs> Losing a hair, tiny cock, you need a Porsche. Clear all your debts with one easy payment. Buy a shotgun and blow your head off. <laughs> Take two bottles into the shower. Yes, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, on that topic. Our next topic is inappropriate acts for the Royal Variety performance. <laughs> Let's play Who's Harry's Dad? <laughs> Stephen Hawking unplugged. <laughs> Your Royal Highnesses, Lords, ladies and gentlemen, I give you synchronised dogging. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the marching band of the Mujah Hadeen! <laughs> As a treat for the Duke of Edinburgh, the black and white minstrels sing the speeches of Hitler. <laughs> the George Michael motorcycling display team! At the end of that round, points go to Ian, John and Andy. Everyone come back. the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, John Coleshaw, Ian Stone. <laughs> Commiserations to Frankie Boy, Hugh Dennis and Mark Watson. Thank you for watching. Good night.